Hello everybody and welcome to another Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dan Lopez and I am the Application Specialist for Tecla PowerFab. Uh, today we are going to talk about the different levels of material traceability that you can accomplish for the materials, you know, depending on what is required from your project specifications and what it is required from your quality manuals in compliance with the type or category of your AISC certification or your specific regional institution. Okay, well, let's get into it. Uh, as you may be all, all already aware, either if you are receiving from Tecla EPM, from the purchase orders uh, portion of the software, or from your mobile devices using EPM Go, uh, when receiving material, let me just go here from my cell phone to the receiving screen and receive the material that I have pending here. There is this channel, for example, if I receive that material, I can input information like the bill of light, bill of lady number, uh, the heat number, which will be very relevant to what I intend to show you today. Uh, the location, which is optional, right? In case you have your yards uh, divided and you can easily find the material afterwards when you need it. Uh, and things like the country of origin, right? So for uh, those of you that have limitations in some projects to use of a particular origin, like uh, all domestic material, uh, you can input that when you receive the material. So then it's a filter more in your inventory uh, when you run your nestings and you can make sure that you are always using the material for the country of origin in particular that you want to use. Uh, so I will receive this material and then from the desktop version I can actually attach a heat document or material certificate or material test report, whatever you guys uh, usually call that. Uh, you can do that either from the PO portion or the inventory portion. I'll show you real quick how, how to do it from the PO right now. Uh, I can just go here and check my heat documents and that's showing me that I'm missing the document for that particular channel. I, I know the heat number because it was, uh, you know, input when receiving from EPM Go, but here I can just go and open the document index and add the document reference that I am missing. Uh, in this case, in this example, I'll do it from a computer. Like if I got that document, either, either scan it or I receive that and save it into a particular location, I can just browse and, and find it and add that reference that I am missing. And then I will I will have my documents complete. If I close this and refresh my screen, I'll have that completed in here. Uh, now, in a second scenario, I can do that same thing from the inventory, right? If I go to the inventory and let, let me just go and try to find the heat documents for a particular project. Uh, let me just go and find the job reserve for the 2023 check the heat documents and so this is showing me every single material that I have in my inventory right now the heat doc the heat number that I have and then all the material that has a document as you can see I, I am actually missing this one for this uh, Y flange 14 by 109 uh, you can also attach that from a, uh, an email right so I can just go and add document reference and then go to my Outlook email, select the actual email where I got the material test report, which is this one right here. Uh, with that email selected, going back to EPM, I can just say Outlook attachments, and I will go and find the actual email that I have selected. Uh, okay, and that brings the actual PDF that I have selected to that. So I add that file add the document reference and now the document it's available for me uh, from here I can either open the file or I can and this is actually opening in my second screen but uh, you can see there's the material test report you can email the file from here or you can e even also if I go back one screen uh, save the documents into a particular location all of them let me just refresh that and now you can see that everything is completed uh, or you can also print the documents uh, and if you need to deliver them uh, another option is you know you you deliver those documents together with a report that can show the relation to your actual contractor right if you save those documents into any particular location and email them and you email also together this report they it will be pretty clear to them find out which file which in this case for example the first one says the file name ntr 6-28 it is actually 
for this being a, a 14 by 43 60 footer and they can see the heat number and everything on it so uh, that's a very easy way to deliver those documents um, have in mind that in this scenario you will be actually providing uh, the documents and the relation for the material that you buy or have reserved for this project right uh, there are cases where you will need to provide that relation but for the material that was actually used and also let your client know uh, which heat number was used for each part uh, in that scenario you came from production control uh, go and review the TFS details or taken from stock details and you can see the whole job or filter a particular sequence or as uh, a group of main marks uh, it's just whatever you want I'll go for now go and filter my white flange for the job for example and pull the details and here from this screen you can actually see exactly which part was cut from which hit number right you can see also if you have the document for that or even update the document if you still haven't uploaded that uh, material test report into your system uh, the report actually here provides a little bit more of information if I go to the heat documents with material report which is this, the similar to the one that we saw a moment ago uh, you can see here that it's also telling you the part mark so we know exactly which marks were cut from which heat number and you can get all this relation from these reports all right so that will be a, a not a lot of companies require that level of traceability but it's available for you if you need it now for some other cases the project will require uh, full serialization quality tracking of main members or even accessory parts uh, you can enable that under the edit the screen of the production control job in the input settings tab we have the main member instance tracking and the accessory part instance tracking if you want to use that uh, the, a good example of that will be nuclear industry jobs or bridge war they usually require that extra level of tracking uh, instance tracking it is a function that can allow you to to enable that extra level of traceability so you tell the system what piece exactly you are processing in cases where you have more than one main or accessory part using the same main mark uh, for example if you have 10 columns c1 uh, when you are processing those with the ins with the instance tracking function enable it uh, you will do c1 dash 1-2-3 you you add that extra portion that will allow you through the processes to identify those items individually as well uh, everything pretty much gets defined on the taken from stock station right which usually it is at the cut process so you define that from the cut list pretty much uh, let me pull my cell phone here uh, back to the screen oh, let me hide this email uh, so I'll go to the job here and go to my cut list there you go so I'll, I'll open this cut list that I have in here uh, this is EPM go right this is showing me exactly the beam that I need to cut It's a 60 footer uh, I can expand the details and see which uh, part marks I am actually cutting from all of those it's the B284 of course from here I can access either the drawing or or see the piece in the model itself uh, I have that marked through this cut list several times you can see that I have plenty of those B284 to cut but this is also showing me here which instance number I am processing when I cut each one of those bars if you see here I will highlight this on the video is the instance number one and three then I can go here and it's the instance number two and four uh, then I can keep going and this is will be the instance number uh, nine and twelve so that it's actually going through uh, getting that instance number assigned in the cutting process of course the, the operator will uh, probably mark this physically into the piece right label it or tag or, or anything that needs to be done so that instance number is preserved to the process and you always know which instance number was that piece even when you paint that piece or, or any of the other subsequent processes so what I will do here is process this uh, say I'm cutting this so I'll go ahead and and swap also the heat number that's uh, something that the operator can do you can see here I have the 4599 something uh, but in reality if the operator has a big pile of beams he will just take the first one that is exactly the same length and grade so I'll, he have the, still the chance to swap that and get the correct one 
uh, once he chooses that he can proceed said who completed this material this is of course optional uh, company by company uh, the time if you are tracking that as well uh, confirm that and you keep going with the different pieces um, I'll maybe go ahead and finish another one just right here like this one with the instance number two and four uh, just swap the document uh, hit number as well fill the information for who completed and, and the time this time in hours instead of minutes confirm and there you go so I'll process the rest of the background and then we'll I'll go back to the software and show you what this will allow us to do okay so I quickly went ahead and proceed cutting all those beams uh, and I have a load prepared and waiting for the pieces to be uh, put in there so I'll just go ahead and open the load properties uh, maybe you have seen in the past this check hit documents option that it's available have in mind that this will be possible to get the hit documents of every material that you put into a truck only if you are using the instance tracking option okay so what I will do here is add material and then go and find the uh, B284 which it was the actual uh, mark that we proceed uh, with the cut list and uh, of course you can do this from EPM go as well and it, it will be usually the typical workflow I'll go ahead and include only seven of those 15 and here you can choose the instance number and that's where I will actually define which material documents this will be providing uh, obviously there's different ways that you can do this I can just commas I can use uh, a dash to make a range of pieces like right here so I can for example go and say it's the number one it's the number five and also it's the number seven also is the number nine also is the number 12 which I am actually shipping as well and it's the 15 and lastly I'll go back and say it's the number three right so those are my seven pieces I think yep seven so add this material and then I can click the check hit documents and that is actually providing me the particular hit number that was used for each one of those instance numbers and from here of, of course as well I can uh, print the document save the documents get the reports that we saw before even see the documents right I can just go and open or email the file from here uh, just real quick let me open this hit document you can see there it's the hit document for for that particular piece uh, so that will enable that option to, to get the heat documents for every shipping truck that you are uh, shipping to the job site anyway so this is uh, a summary of the material traceability options that you have in the system if you have any questions please feel free to uh, contact your help desk area and thank you for watching